What's going on, you crazy bastards? You're back here with Rob Kimball for a raw review right after Extreme Rules. Anyway, we start off this show with a 20-man battle royal for the United States Championship. And it looks like that Triple H booked this match to get this belt off from Dean Ambrose because he's very sour about losing. And he does not like to lose. So, he's going to try to put a little losing taste on the Dean Ambrose. So we get it, the classic, get the big guy out first type of deal. We get some other cool shit. But in the end, you just get Sheamus' shitty bro kick. Fucking wins the damn U U United States Championship like he did a few years ago. Right after the, the last King of the Ring. And, uh... What will Sheamus do with his belt? What will Dean Ambrose do about losing his belt? Will Sheamus turn that belt into the Euro European Championship belt this time, guys? Comment below what do you think. Or will it just disappear eventually, just like uh, Abyss from TNA did with the, T with the TV title? Because I think just the IC title is all that's needed, and then the combination of the world title and the WWE championship that will be just one belt eventually and that's all you need guys that's it you got tags you got the intercontinental champion and you got the WWE world heavyweight that's that's the way it should be in the divas belt <clears throat> then we are uh, so after this you get Reigns and Rollins in there checking on Dean Ambrose and uh Triple H's music, well, Evolution's music hits, comes out. He says the war is far from over, and um, he's booking the Shield tonight against the Wyatt family. So we move on to Stephanie McMahon telling Daniel Bryan that all he did was uh, anger Kane the monster, and he's coming after him, and uh, that he should stay in the locker room. So he's safe, him and Brie Bella, and uh, wait there until his match. Like, that doesn't seem like a setup. She shuts the door. Kane's mask is hanging there. Whatever. Horrible. Like, those segments were just horrible. I didn't like them. What do you guys think? Did you like the segments with Stephanie McMahon and Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella? And then later on with Kane? Although, the one later on we'll get to, holy shit, there was a cool spot, Okay. Then we go on to RVD versus Cesaro, and RVD ends up winning because of a DQ. Cesaro keeps beating the shit out of him, kicking him, punching him, and uh, Paul Heyman's just like, hey, hold on, hold on, you don't want to get suspended or nothing. So we got this uh, a little mean streak coming from Cesaro, and, and we have a, a smart manager telling him what to do. So... We're going to move on with Cesaro eventually. He, he's moving up this ladder. He's, he's doing it. It's fucking awesome. Love Cesaro. And then we got Wyatt's are here. Fucking promo from Bray Wyatt. The usual always awesome promo from Bray Wyatt. Just uh, awesome. Explaining how Sister Abigail told him he was born to be a leader, but he'll be looked down upon as a nobody. And he says that last night at Extreme Rules, he became a somebody. And uh, after beating John Cena, John Cena's going to stand alone. And he's going to stand with the children. He's going to stand with the poor. He's going to stand with every one of you. And that's awesome. So it seems like the Wyatts are turning face here almost. And... Uh, it's a very, very cool storyline, and I love, love Bray Wyatt. Just great, and fucking Luke Harper is doing really good, too. I like that. Really good stuff. It's fun to see little factions every now and then succeed. Then we come back to Cody Rhodes versus Ryback, and uh, you got a little, little bit of back and forth with the two. Cody Rhodes looking much better during this match. And we get a little mean streak out of Ryback, which we haven't seen in a while. And uh, Ryback ends up winning because uh, Cody Rhodes is up on the top turnbuckle after some of his offense that he was delivering. And uh, he gets distracted with gold dust and Axel outside of the ring. And he, he gets turned into a shell shock. 
Samoan drop type deal. Boom, done, one, two, three. So Ryback wins, and it, it, I don't know, it, it seems like it, it furthers the Cody Rhodes gold dust aggravation between each other. So I think that's where we're going with it. We'll find out. And again, backstage, Daniel Bryant with Brie Bella, and uh, they're in their locker room hiding. Why fucking dumb? Lights go out, and Bree's scared of shit. Daniel Bryant just says, let's go. They boogie. They, you see Kane's mask over a light in the room. And uh, <clears throat> then they run into Stephanie McMahon backstage. She says, Why, what, where are you guys going? I told you to stay. Stay put. You need to go back and stay put. So, and... Anyway, <laughs> she tells them that she's going to get their card ready for them. And uh, when we get to that segment, let me tell you, I'm going to rip on Stephanie McMahon. She says, I'm going to get your car for you, okay? And so that means they can go to their car and get the fuck out of the arena, right? Okay. Later on that next segment, we can all pick on Stephanie McMahon, okay? Los Matadores. Come out to celebrate fucking Cinco de Mayo and the victory for El Torito and uh, three and a half MB. They come out, interrupt. It just turns into chaos, horse shit. Who gives a fuck? Uh, I it's just. I guess these guys are just going to continue feuding all fucking year long. And I, whatever, if you're going to be on the roster, fine. Just have short matches, please. Then we get Kofi Kingston versus Alexander Rusev and Lana. So, Kofi Kingston just a few months ago defeats the then WWE World Heavyweight Champion in a non-title match to job him the fuck out to the new guy that's getting a push. Anyway, the match Kofi does get some good offense in. He, got, he did look pretty good during this match. Rusev... Needs more ring time, clearly, but he's a brick fucking shit house and uh, gets the fucking accolade slash camel clutch tap out from Kofi Kingston. And uh, earlier, when Lana comes out, she gets a little bit of heat, but talking about Putin, the Russian president there, and Eric Snowden, how you know he used to work for the NSA. And he uh, was a whistleblower, so he's over there in Russia right now. And he's, that's his refuge right now, and Putin's keeping him there. So, tries to get a little heat from that, but I think the the fans like Lana a lot. So, <laughs> she don't, she's not going to need any heat. Then we move on to uh, Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella backstage getting into their car finally. The Chrysler 300 with the dent in the back door. So... They go to get in, and Stephanie McMahon comes running up, bangs on the fucking window. Where are you guys going? You have a match. And Brian, you, you, that could be a breach of your contract. You need to uh, go to your match, or you'll be stripped of your title. Like, fuck you. You just said, I'll bring you your car, this and that. Stay in the locker room. Stay safe. But now, come out and have a fucking match. Why'd you even bring a car? Why? Why didn't you just in the locker room say, you got a fucking match tonight and you're going to do it. Otherwise, you'll be stripped from your title. And the acting. <sighs> Ugh. Brie Bella's scream was way too much. Way over the top. And so, Brian says, fuck it. Going to my match. Del Rio versus Daniel Bryan then. And it looks like this entire match, Daniel Bryan's on autopilot. He's playing the part exactly like he should. Brie Bella's on the outside of the ring, constantly looking over his shoulder. They look worried during the match. Although, Daniel Bryan just defeated Kane. Why should he be afraid of run and hide? He's the champion. Although, this match was pretty decent, actually. Del Rio getting in some good offense. He's got some good moves. And, oh, the fucking ending was awesome. Daniel Bryan goes to, you know, like, to, to do the Huracarana, but he turns it into the yes lock. We get the tap from Del Rio. Del Rio, fuck yeah, awesome. I liked that shit. Although, uh, Daniel Bryan was basically on autopilot until the very end there where he focused right in. 
he was still pulling out some good moves, and he was still playing the role like he should be worried that, you know, Kane was coming around. Awesome. I like it. And Del Rio did really well during this also. So playing off the fans, doing the yes chance for heat. Cool. And then Kane's music hits the fucking flame shoot from the turn buckle, turn post, and uh, that's that. And so they run off. Why run? You just beat Kane. You just beat him. Yeah, you're probably tired and you've been through hell this last, since SummerSlam, actually. So you can overcome the odds like you have. Don't run. So I, I don't think they should have went with that whole thing. So anyway, uh, Kane, after he's, they go run into their car to get the fuck out of the arena. Kane's in the back seat. Car battery's dead this time, although it started the very first time. So Daniel Bryan's out trying to be a mechanic. Kane comes up, grabs Brie Bella, and Daniel Bryan just goes right after him, fucking gets him out outside of the car, and Kane goes to jump onto the back. Daniel Bryan takes off, and you hear his fucking thud. Boy, I, it, and Daniel Bryan took off pretty damn quick, and that was all live shit, so it, it looked like the, uh, Kane could have been really fucked up right there. But anyway, he stops, he gets out, maybe remembering the time that they were tag team champions, or Daniel Bryan was the tag team champions, or Kane was the tag team champions. Either way, they were friends for a little while. So he gets outside of the car, looks like he's actually a little worried, and Kane sits up like the Undertaker. So they take off, and Kane goes after the car again, but Bryan punches it. They're out of there. That's that. And we go on to Big E versus Bad News Barrett. And uh, we get a rematch already for the title from Big E and B Bad News Barrett here. And um, <sighs> Big E is just not looking so good in there. Uh, he gets a couple things in, decent, and uh, I don't know. Barrett comes out, tries to get some heat. You know, he does a, a good job with the bad news. And although you get... Barrett chance the whole goddamn match, and we get the giant fucking bowl hammer. Get the win. Wade Barrett, still your intercontinental champion. Fuck yeah. You can get down with that. Then we have a Mother's Day tribute from Mr. T. And holy shit, I'm glad they shortened that and didn't keep the whole thing, the, the content from the first. I love my mama. <laughs> And uh, it's all right. It's cool. Mother's Day's coming. Everybody love your mama. I know I've got to. So, and we got Swagger and Zeb Colts are coming out to the ring. They have a, well, it's, Zeb's got a deportation list, and he's got everybody on the roster that needs to go back. It's pretty funny. I got a little chuckle out of this, especially when you got the Sheamus and Paige. <laughs> they haven't had sun on their skin since 1997. Funny shit. And then uh, we get some new music hitting. Bunch of party people come out. The shit's fucking ready to go, man. And uh, you get Adam Rose. Comes to the ring, happy, sucking on a lollipop. And uh, gets a little crowd surf from his rose buds. And <laughs> comes in, and he grabs fucking Zeb Coulter by the handlebar mustache and tells him, don't be a lemon, be a rosebud. <laughs> He backs up, Swagger goes to go after him, swings at him, Rose kicks him, and uh, Swagger's outside of the fucking ring. That's that. We got the party people, we got the Rose Buds, we got Adam Rose now in Raw. We'll see what happens with it. I, I personally think like it's going to fall flat just like last year with uh, Fandango. So we'll find out. And then we got... The Wyatts versus The Shield in the main event at Raw. And fuck yeah. How could you go wrong? Who do you even root for? Like I was like, man, I love both. <laughs> so good stuff. Anyway, we get, we get fucking Dean Ambrose. I love his style. He starts fucking rocking it. Pops on the figure four to um, Roman Reigns. And later on, we get uh, the standoff between all guys. Then Rollins starts getting in some crazy offense, does this fucking flip outside of the ring, lands on his feet, does some crazy-ass fucking neckbreaker twist thing, and um, 
this is just awesome all together and you know uh everything between the two i love it and we, then later on we get luke harper with a suicide dive knocking motherfucker over the goddamn announce table and just everything about it and then finally we get the superman punch from the hot tag to roman reigns and uh he gets it on bray but evolution comes out interrupts the whole fucking thing and uh Roman Reigns, or yeah, Rollins and Ambrose, they suicide dive everybody outside of the ring. So we might be able to get this fucking going. And then Triple H comes in, gets su Superman punch, Triple, Man <laughs> Triple H, and uh, looking good. But that distraction, Bray Wyatt slithers in, now Sister Abigail, fucking one, two, three, lights out. And uh, then... You get to Evolution running in, jumping the fucking shield while they're down. Get all the finishers in, and eventually Batista, the main man, gets in there. It's for the triple power bottom Roman Reigns. They slam it down. They try to look strong. I guess this feud's going to continue, which is A OK with me. And uh, Roman Reigns is fucking bleeding all in his mouth and shit. This, and it, everything's looking good. And the Shield looking so good with the evolution, how they're putting them over. I like that. They're not just fucking squashing them. Decent Raw all together. Some dumb shit. But that's typical with three-hour Raw. So three and hours and 15 minutes usually. So uh, follow me on Twitter at Rob Kimball Brands. And I will catch you next time after TNA Impact Wrestling. Peace.